A day in the shop with Papa at Papa's workshop and today we're making this sign. To support my channel, please go to patreon.com forward slash Papa's workshop. And by all means, take the opportunity right now and please hit that subscribe button. To begin this search, I just keyed in frying pan, clip art, black and white, and you can see it gives quite the variety. And as I was looking through this with my wife, she picked out one that she really liked, and I knew it was going to be a challenge. This is the one that she had picked out right there, and this one has tons and tons of details, and because of the grayscale in this, it's gonna be very difficult to be able to make work. But just to be able to keep it real simple, all I did is right click on this, and I copied the image, and then I came over to Inkscape. And when I got into Inkscape, I just pasted that right into the uh, page, and there's the image. The next thing that you do, you just go up here to the path, do the trace bitmap, and I have this reduced down to the two colors, and you can see what it's going to look like, and I'm just going to click OK. Then the new image, the actual image that we just created, is on top of it. So there it is. You know, this one we don't need anymore, so I can just cut it. So this is my new image. And you can see now, and this is the same thing up here, I wanted to be able to show you exactly how I did it. But it shows a lot of the detail. The black is going to obviously cut the deepest, but these fine lines are going to be the issue. Now I want to go ahead and show you this right now. Let me go ahead and look at all of the nodes. And if I zoom in real close, you're gonna be able to see, let me slide over a little bit, just tons and tons of nodes. Now, one of the things you could do is actually come through and clean this up and eliminate a lot of them, but I decided not to. I wanted just to see just what this new tool pathing would do, even with tons and tons of nodes like this. So the next step was just to save this as a SVG file, and then I'm gonna open it up into Easel. The other graphic that I need to have is the ball jar. So I'm just gonna type in ball jar, and let's see what we can find. Now this is the one that I went ahead and picked out. So I was looking for something with the bold lines like this so that it would give me an easy carve. So I went ahead and clicked on this one, but it did not have the word ball in this. So here is a graphic right here with the ball logo. So I actually used both of these. So I'm gonna be able to save this one and then I bring this one in and you can see the image. So all I'm going to do is the exact same thing. Click on Path, do the Trace Bitmap, do an update on this, and hit... The, oops. Let's go ahead and reduce this down to the two colors. I really don't need anything else. We'll do an update. Hit OK. We'll slide my new image out of the way. And then delete this. This is the original one, which we no longer need. Now, the next thing, I wanted to be able to put the ball logo into this. So let's go back over to the um, Google and we're going to click on this image. Same thing. Right click on the image, copy it, bring it over into the Inkscape and we'll right click and paste it. Now while it's in this mode I want to be able to go ahead and update this because it will do the image trace. There it is. We'll slide it up. Let's get rid of this one. And you can see how these steps are exactly the same each and every time. Now I'm gonna resize this. Bring that down right there. And I could have used the um, shift key and kept it exactly the same. There we go. And then let's slide this over on top. And we still need to make it smaller. And that looks pretty good. 
Now that we have this looking the way we want it to, I'll go ahead and save this and we'll bring this image into easel as well. So we're done with the Inkscape. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Now I have a brand new sign here. This is five and a half inches wide, is 24 inches long. And remember, this is my cedar finch slat that we're using. So I'm going to go over to my import. This is an SVG file. And I'm going to come right over here and look at my ball jar. And this is the SVG document. So we'll open it. And all I need to be able to do is just resize this. We'll bring it right down so that fits into there. And let's see, a little bit smaller. I think I want to bring it up just a little bit. And I think that looks good. While we're here, let's go ahead and get the frying pan. Again, this is an SVG file. There's my frying pan right there. And we'll open that. And you can see this. So let's go ahead and move it over in place. And we'll resize this one at the same time. And we'll leave it just like this for now. As far as the font, we can come over here and I use this font right here, but you could use any font that you wanted to. So this is the font that I'm gonna use. We'll backspace, we'll get rid of this. We'll type in Debbie's over there right into this position and I'm going to make these letters a little bit taller I like that and we'll make this just a little bit smaller this way I like that and we'll take the frying pan we'll slide it down just a little bit so it's right underneath kitchen and then we'll come back to same text Okay, and this time we're going to hit serve yourself. With that typed in, I do want to rotate this. I'm going to rotate it. And we can use this up here on the shape. This is at 24 degrees. Don't want to do that much. You can actually type in an exact amount. And I think I'm just going to type in 10 degrees. We're going to reduce this down smaller. And we'll just slide that right up in place. And that looks good. And we'll finish this statement now with the same font. And we'll bring this over here where you can see it. There we go. Now, while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. We'll slot it up in place. And there's our sign. That looks real good. Now, as far as the bit, we're using the 60 degree V bit. And on the cut settings, I'm going to switch this over to manual. But I put this in at 80 inches per minute with a plunge rate of 20 inches per minute. I left the depth per pass at 0 0.06. That is fine. The last thing I want to take a look at is the depth of cut. This right now is actually cutting way too deep. So I'm going to start and just highlight everything and come up here to cut depth. And we're going to put this down to uh, about 0.1 of an inch. And I can do it with this slide bar. Or I can just go ahead and highlight this block right here and put it in at 0.1. And I'm done. 
And now if we look at this over here, let's go ahead and hit the preview. And that's what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And I wanna show you one more thing on here. Let's get rid of this. And you'll notice that these letters are still flat on the bottom. So I don't want that. So what I want to be able to do is have it where these letters will actually cut deeper rather than have the flat bottom on it. So I'm gonna go back over to the um, design screen and I'm gonna click on the letters and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and that gets the rest of these. And we're gonna change this to about point, uh, let's say point two. And let's take a look at it. Now the important thing about this is once you get the depth set, it will only go so deep, regardless of how deep that you set it. And here's what I mean. With the geometry of the bit, it will not go any wider than the width of the letters. That's why these wide portions go deep in a V-carve and the very narrow portions are very shallow because what you're looking for is this point right down here where it creates that line. Now it will not go any deeper than that. I can change this all the way down to the full depth. See, if you look at this, now with this literally at a full depth, it still does not carve any deeper than what the geometry allows. The geometry only allows that bit to be able to get to the point where it touches the sides of the letters. Once it reaches that point, it stops. So with this V groove coming all the way down to a nice sharp point like this, it's not gonna go any deeper. So even though it says, 0.5 of an inch, it won't cut that deep. People often ask, well, how deep do you carve it? Well, you carve it down to the point where it reaches that depth. And if you set the um, depth a little bit larger or a little bit deeper, that's fine. Now, when I made the adjustment back at the 0.17, you'll see where it's just a little bit of the flat bottom in there. And so we need to have it just a little bit deeper. So that's why I went ahead and just put this at point two. As long as it's a little bit deeper, it is going to work just fine. And it will not carve any deeper than what it needs to to create that nice sharp point at the bottom of the letters. And now you can see that look, and that's what I'm trying to get. How that comes right down and creates that nice sharp line. So I'm using 0.2 of an inch. It's probably just a little bit less than that, but this is okay. That's what I'm after. The new tool paths are actually doing quite good. The router does not move and jump from one area to another as it did before. So I really like the new tool paths. So at this point, it is concentrating on doing this ball jar with the graphic. And once it's finished, then it moves over and starts the letters. Now this is set at 80 inches per minute and on the first pass it does move very quickly and then for the detail pass it actually slows down and gets that fine uh, cut on the letter. Now this is cedar, it's actually a cedar fin slap so it's very soft wood and it's rough material but you can see on this first pass where it's pretty rough but when it comes back and does this cleanup, it cleans out that letter and it looks really good. So I'm actually impressed with how it's cleaning out the um, letters and making for a very smooth uh, sign. And I'm not planning on doing any sanding whatsoever because actually my intent was to have a rustic sign. The bit that I'm using is a 60 degree V bit. And I'm using the Easel Pro to be able to do this uh, carving today. And that way it is able to get all of that fine detail of those letters. And this letter is a pro letter font. Now you could choose whatever font that you wanted to. And other than the V-bit, 
This could be done with an eighth inch bit, just using a different font, and stay with just the basic easel. Now this is the frying pan. This was the one that was a little bit of a challenge. This graphic was actually found and my wife wanted to be able to use this one and I said, well, this is gonna be a challenge, so let's take a look and see if we can make it carve. And if you look at it, why it's going so slow? Look at the nodes. There's tons and tons of nodes in there. So that's why it's carving very slow. And this is set up where it actually carves extremely shallow to be able to get that detail. But all in all, I still think it's gonna look real good once I put the uh, sealer on it. But it does make nice, clean, clear lines and it's doing very well. But often, you, people will ask, well, why is my CNC machine running so slow? Well, <laughs> take a look at the nodes and see if there's just tons of them like I just showed you. That will definitely slow it down. So even though this is set at 80 inches per minute, it by no means is going to be able to move that quick with that many nodes. Now the sealer that I'm using is the shellac and this is the amber color. And look at that frying pan. I think that came out really good. And again, this is absolutely no sanding whatsoever. I took it off of the CNC machine. I put the sealer on it and it's in the process of drying now. I think this is a very easy, simple way to make a sign and the results are fantastic. And because I wanted it rustic, yes, I did use the burlap type of string to be able to um, hang it with. So thank you for watching the video today and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you were able to learn a little something about the new uh, tool paths that are being uh, created in the easel software. It definitely is an improvement over the old tool paths and it does save a lot of time. This one only took a little bit less than 30 minutes to be able to carve, even with the frying pan.